we're done sharpening our knife nice and sharp so i'm ready to make some do some bait demos so i thought uh we touch on on putting doing some baits for some edible fish uh the the fish that i'm gonna be targeting with these baits are gonna be a natal stump nose or a southern pompano this part of the year on our coast especially in the zululand side we see an influx of southern pompano that bless our coast um, and sizes vary from one kilo right up to 12 kilos so really strong fighting fish i really love targeting them uh, together uh, with that you get the Natal stump nose that uh, obviously is a beautiful eating fish that a lot of people like to target also very elusive there's not many around now obviously being overfished and pressured by rock and surf anglers so yeah so basically this bait's going to cover fishing for both of those species uh, you generally fish for both of those species in the same area so same formation either on a nice uh, bank a working bank or very close to reef where there's mussels and stuff because I can almost guarantee you 99% of the time if you do keep a pompano and you cut it open you will find mussels in its tummy and uh, they predominantly feed on crustaceans so it's crayfish it's uh, sea lice it's mussels they do eat octopus now and then uh, they do feed on chaka they feed on baby squid so it's your white baits and your 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 uh, your mollusks so we're gonna we're gonna make a few variants of baits and I'm gonna teach you how to maximize the use of your crayfish uh, it is open season now and remember that uh, for these mollusks you need to have a, a, a license for it so your general bait license will cover your sea lice and then obviously your um, crayfish license will cover your crayfish and uh, yeah baby squid you get off the shelf and chaka obviously off the shelf so start with the trace basically uh it's a straightforward straight nylon trace although a stumpy uh, natal stump nose has teeth it doesn't really bite you off you just need a strong hook because um, they do sometimes tend to crush your hook uh, if you hook it in the wrong place a pompano southern pompano has a very very soft mouth and it has no teeth it's got crushes at the back i have uh, uh, hooked a fish before where it crushed my hook flat so but most of the time you hook them before they actually get to solo your bait i, I don't think i've ever hooked a, a, a southern pompano in the gut ever uh, and i think it's because of how they feed so so guys we have to understand how the fish feeds um, in order for us to target the species so it's more very likely that the southern pompano feeds right at the bottom obviously trying to dig up sea lice eating crabs uh, looking for crayfish near the reef picking mussels off the rocks so, so basically bottom feeders. So I don't put float on my hook uh, when I target them. Uh, I use a 5 or a 6 size mustard soy ring. So that's very sharp, also very strong um, and 0.7. Sometimes if I'm fishing on a bank, I'll go down to 0.6 because they've got no teeth. Uh, but this is 0.7 uh, for us fishing off yogis because there's mussel beds and we're fishing off a ledge. So a little bit of protection from the reef um, and then a three-way swivel so basically my trace is going to be that length uh, I'll explain this little piece now to you uh, and then a three-way swivel and what I use is a wire sinker so a lot of people look strangely when I fish for pompano and ask me why a wire sinker and what I find is that a pompano is sort of an aggressive feeder so he's a snatch and go feeder he snatches your bait he either comes forward very fast or he pulls you flat down and he just takes off so with that soft mouth sharp hook with a wire sinker that actually helps you to connect that fish um, I've, I've found and this is just my preference that I, I, I get a better hook up rate whilst fishing for pompano with a wire sinker than fishing with a cone sinker um, yeah so I actually don't even have to hit it once I go tight and that fish takes string, it's already hooked. So, yes, they, they've got a very soft mouth. Um, suggestion when you do hook one is pull it very fast. Because what happens is if you fight it for too long, that hook hole gets big because the mouth's so soft and uh, your hook comes off. It happened to me quite a few times. And then little change that I've made on my hook here. So I've added a piece of 180-pound braid that's tied to the shank of that hook and it's got a little 
splittering there. So that's if I need to clip my bait and throw it far. So obviously it's a similar to a dingle dangle or a dangle uh, that you bait up and then you hook and you throw. Uh, this is just my J hook version of a dingle dangle. So if I need to throw very far and clip it, uh, you know, reach a far bank, that's going to help me and it's not going to affect how I, uh, it's not going to turn the hook around or how, how I bait my hook up or anything like that. All right. So that's that. Guys, basically this sea lice bait, so I had two sea lice with, uh, baited up in my freezer. So I, I did go and fish for Papano before the lockdown and uh, I was too lazy to cut my hooks. So this is basically what the bait's going to look like when we're done. And I've had a spare sea lice in my freezer as well that was baited up. Not the best, but yeah. So that's, that's basically what we're aiming for. Sea lice on the outside and crayfish there on the back of the sea lice. All right. So this is something different that I do. Um, I know competitive guys, you're not allowed to use uh, additives in your bait. But what I found is that Pompano are uh, attracted to red stuff. I don't know why. Uh, so what I do is I make a concoction of aniseed oil with Robertson's red food coloring. And when I do get prawn or uh, do get some crayfish, uh, immediately peel it and then I put it in a tub, I chop it up in nice small pieces and then I add some of this, some of that and I freeze it. So basically what happens is my prawn and my crayfish is now red. Doesn't do anything at all to the smell or anything of that sort. It works perfectly as it is. All right. Uh, so I normally cut a small piece like that and that's what I'm going to use. In fact, sometimes a little bit smaller. You don't need a lot of crayfish guys because you want to, you want to, that sea lice is, is what calls that fish. So that's your hook there. If this was a whole sea lice, I would just put it whole. So through the back, sorry, this sea lice was broken off in the back. Um, and you come in under there. So you'll see that your hook comes out right in between those two flaps. You pull your hook through and you turn it around. Okay. So when you turn it around, you've basically got your hook sitting like that. And what I do is I just break this shell off there on either side. So it holds a cotton, right? And then we put this under and then we bind that together. Okay. Once we bind that together, you're going to end up with something that looks like this. All right, obviously no line attached, I cut it off, but that's exactly what you want. So you'll catch a 10 kilo pommy with this and you'll catch a one kilo pommy with this. Um, very effective bait on our side, on our coast, uh, works like a charm. What I do sometimes is if the bites are slow, I just crush open this, uh, if there's no cotton on and I just peel that shell off. So basically you're left with the, with the insides of the of the sea lice. I'm just going to peel it off quickly and you'll see what it looks like on the inside. There we go. So shell off. So you'll have your crayfish or prawn at the bottom and then you're going to have your your sea lice which is de-shelled on the top there. All right. So that's that's one one way of making a bait, right? Uh, I'm going to show you something else that I use as well. So a lot of guys when they catch a crayfish, um, they take the head and they throw it away, they take the legs and throw it away and they just keep the meat. So I don't do that because I don't have the luxury of catching a lot of crayfish. So it's either I get some from Atcan Marine or now and then if I hook one on a hook like this one I caught just before lockdown whilst we're fishing at Yogi's on a hook, on a circle hook actually. So I try and keep everything and I maximize the use of my crayfish. So I'm just going to use a, a 3 0 bait holder for this. Also another hook that I use for Pompano. Strong, sharp. Basically, this is the, the bottom of a crayfish. So where the legs attach, you can see this is where the legs attach. There's the legs. I chopped it up. Basically, I use everything in the crayfish except for the top hard shell. I took off and the, the, the shell at the back where the meat is. That's all gone. So that's my hard shell. And guys, remember something. A pompano doesn't mind a hard shell. 
because he eats muscles he eats crustaceans all right so when you're not feeding them they have to eat the with the shell right so i hook that on the meaty side there with the hard shell in the bottom right and why i like to use a mustard bait holder for obvious reasons it's got the bait holder and i cotton that on nicely if you see some pieces of shell just break it off that's protruding all right Right, and then I take a little slice of crayfish. There's my hammer. Okay, I put that on the side. And that's it. So, out of that base in the bottom, under, I can make about five or six baits. And a stumpy will eat this, a pompano will eat this. Guys, I've even caught sandies on this and honeycombs on this. Because they also feed on crustaceans. So, for me, very effective bait. I use it a lot. Uh, it's, it's not the prettiest looking bait. But it's got the smell. And it's got the crunch that they want from crustaceans on there. So, very nice bait. Works for me. The other alternative to this, and when, when these are done, I take the legs and I cut them off right so you can see that they've cut off very short and I just sort of try and make them all the same size chop that and then I take my hammer I give that a little bash just soften it up a bit I'll show you why Guys, if you're going to buy crayfish to use for bait, obviously very difficult to get your hands on. Uh, it's going to be expensive. So you're going to want to maximize your use. And you can see all the meat coming out of that already. There's a lot of meat in the legs, guys. Uh, just looking for a hook here. Okay. So I'm going to take that, put it all together. With that meat that shot out, just put some cotton on this first to hold it together. All right. Guys, remember that there's an open and closed season for crayfish. So please do not use this bait when it's closed season. Do not even, unless you, you buy it. I don't know if you're allowed to sell it during closed season. But keep your receipts with you, please. Um, there we go. So that's tied up together. Then what I do is I take this hook and I obviously under that cotton there. So that's now nice and proud, right? So it's got the crunch again, it's got the smell around it. And then I'm gonna let's cotton that up a little bit more so the hook stays on. Nice and proud. And then again, add a little bit of color to it. Guys, if you haven't tried this red food coloring trick, it's it's going to change your life. I've noticed a hell of a lot of increase in my bites since I've started using this, especially for edible fish. I've been using it for years and years. Um, there we go. So, that's legs, guys. Crayfish legs. You would never say that that's crayfish legs. And, again, Stumpy... Flatfish, Pompano, love it, absolutely love it. So, nice proud hook. You can push the hook down a little bit. This is a four row, it's a bit big for me, uh, obviously on the bait holder side, but that's perfect. It's absolute perfect size for a Pompano. That's the size bait you want. You don't want anything bigger than that. All right. So yeah, cheers.